grouping up now. Jumped on to uh, behind the fray and forced the flash out right away. Here comes the Cyclone knocking down the back line. Oh, the Unleashed Power whips out onto Resistance, takes him down. Here comes a two-man Cyclone, or um, <laughs> Command Shockwave, and so much action going down. And three people died from Goons, Goons Incorporated after that spontaneous engage. Yeah, but that was that was a 4v5 engage, and Nasus was just too, was busy pushing the turret up top. Uh, he didn't use his teleport to come down, uh, and Oriana used her Shockwave very, very late. She, she kind of held on to it for a bit too long, and oh, oh Leona's going to go down to that boomerang blade, so they do lose out that mid turret, but they do pick up, it's a two for one, they lose that mid turret, but they might lose it on the top inner turret, because Nasus is going to be able to take that, so a fairly even trade here, but they're going to lose out on that dragon possibly, unless uh, Resistance can get there in time, which they might be able to, because they have no smite, and yeah. if they can get this dragon, that trade will go in favor of them. Yeah, that was such an unfortunate misplay by uh, Leona there, if had he not died, they might have been able to sneak that dragon in real quickly while they still had the numbers. But now, you know, without the smite even, they're not going to be able to even contest this. Yeah, the this this makes the trade go in favor of uh, Goons Incorporated there. So, great, great return play by them. Nasus didn't TP in. They were completely, completely content with leaving him up there and just letting him farm. He picks up that inner top turret. They get that dragon, and they might be able to even pick up that mid turret off this rotation here. Yeah, so even though they lost that fight, that last fight, yeah, they did gain a whole slew of other objectives in the process, and that's the name of the game. Yeah. That's a giant wave uh, in mid lane, and they're going to be able to crush it down. Syndra is not there yet, but here comes Leona trying to go and actually just decoys out of there once, uh, once he uses a Nimbus strike just to scare him off a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he was, he wanted to make it seem like uh, Sindra was there because they were they wouldn't have been able to to hold that wave unless someone did go in because they had such a massive creep wave they needed to clear that out. Right. So smart play there to just go in and then double decoy out because they needed to clear that wave and they would have lost her otherwise. But Nasus is just continuing to farm up. He's farming up that white camp now, and he has 177 stacks now on his queue. It's starting to kind of ramp up. It's, it's kind of a bit behind for 20 minutes. Usually at 20 minutes, you want to have at least 250 stacks. Uh -huh. But he did get denied pretty hard by the fact that he was 1v2. And he is soul flaring the waves. I'm mean, sorry, he's spear firing the waves. So he is missing out on some stacks there. But he is farming up very well. And he is getting very, very tanky. So that's that's good news for uh, Goons Incorporated. Definitely. You can see... You know, they were starting to show a little bit of a resolve now. They're not afraid to step up anymore. They realize they can win these fights if they if they manage to coordinate well enough. So, seeing them, you know, not only stand up for themselves, but they're even pushing further into the base now. Yeah, and that's mostly because of the fact that Nasus has just been top all game, and Zach has actually kind of foregone farming and just started to decide that he, grouping up is better than farming up top lane and he is down 40 cs but he's kind of starting to contribute to his team a little bit more but those boomerang blades are hitting really hard on iron quan like that's half of his health from one boomerang blade so oh they're just trying to wait there. to camp someone out in that bush right there they might go in on this right now nope yeah they want to ron quan to just uh bait it out a little bit but uh goons incorporated not gonna fall for that one yeah and we are seeing that things on Holy Grail be picked up with a new large rod for Oriana. So she's starting to kind of kind of power up here now. Um, and we have Sindra who's going over that DFG again. She went for that last game. Um, kind of popped was a bit by Bjergsen. A lot of Sindras would go Chalice into uh, Rabadons, but the uh, DFG is really good for bursting out one chip. But Leon's going to go in here. Oh, there's the nice little sh Cyclone knock up three people. Kills Karma almost instantly, and now Nace is forced to use the Fury of the Sands. He's getting made quick work of. This is a great turnaround for uh, Day Wards here. Resistance had to run out of there. Four man strong down at bottom lane. They sh can push this tower down. Sibur uh, did take down Bright Nova in the mid lane, so they did pick up that one kill there in exchange for the two kills at the bottom lane. So, uh, all in all, a good trade for. for um, they they wards, but but they did lose out on Bright Nova in the process. Right. So yep, twenty two minutes in the game, it's four to six, and now the towers are even before um Goons Incorporated had just about three towers over them, but 
did a wonderful job coming back and taking those towers down eventually. Yeah, that mid that middle turret though, however, is very low. So if they were to get a good wave, they would be able to siege that down and take it down. It's got like maybe maybe four or five auto attacks from Silver left on it. So um, they could get ready and, and uh, clear that wave, but I think they're waiting for Dragon to respawn. It's up in a, up in two minutes, so we could like to see them kind of maybe push bot wave and then rotate to mid or or do something like that. But right now they're just gonna keep farming up until Dragon's up, I believe. Absolutely. So, yeah, sindra has got a demanding CS lead in the, and the most in the game right now. Almost 40 CS over Orianna, and uh, it's, it's showing in the items. Got, got uh, actually they got the similar items, but I guess the amplifying tomb shows a little bit more. But, um, yeah, it's still a very close game. Still a toss up for any either either of these teams right now. It's just all going to depend on the next objectives. And also, who's going to be in the better positions in, when these team fights do erupt? Because uh, we, were, we were speaking about this bulldozer composition coming out from Goons Incorporated. If, if you're caught on the back end of it and um, you don't have anyone to run to, you, you're you probably out of luck there. Yeah, um, we still haven't seen them pop the Talisman Ascension with the Shirelli, with the with the E and the, on the hunt yet. So we could be looking to see that come out soon. Mm -hmm. uh, Goons Incorporated still is in the lead, but they can't be too careless because the lead could slip away very quickly. It's a very close game right now. Uh-oh, and here comes Speak of the Devil, the pain train coming on the bottom, but Ron Kwan gets a nice rocket jump out before anything is able to happen to him. That was, uh, he got out there at the right time. Yeah, and Fiona and, and Hill of Trouble did go up to that top lane, but they did not see where Machin K went. He actually went to go farm those those golems so he actually avoids the gank by farming and mm. he's gonna spot leona in the jungle up top and he's gonna walk over a ward and probably go back to base yeah machine now with just about 258 stacks on that queue of his it's only gonna get uh stronger from here it's and you know goons incorporated are more than happy to stall this game out and that's why maybe day Wards is just placing so much emphasis grouping up in mid they don't want to see this go in the late game and they might be forcing a situation here at Dragon. They do have it heavily warded, and uh, Goons Incorporated are going to need to barge in there with little vision on the Dragon itself, but besides the pit. And a nice smite by Leona. But the Ragnarok actually was popped. Speed boosts have gone out. There might be a team fight breaking up, but you know, Goons Incorporated not wanting to fight because that's exactly what Day Wards wants to do. Yeah, and Goons really wants to just keep powering up because they know they cannot fight yet without that Nasus. He's just one of their main tanks. He's he's powered up so hard, and they they really just need him to be with them. I mean, Sivir is very strong right now, but she requires Peel, and right now they don't have the, one of their main tankers there because Hill of Shovel could still jump onto onto Sivir, and they're really afraid of her getting burst out by Sinjar right now, who does so much damage. Now Mashenke has returned, and now Day Day Wards are on the retreat. Now a bunch of low HP bars after various amounts of trading and poking. So, respectively, they're gonna fall back to their corners and maybe call it a day. And you're seeing Mashenke head back towards the top area. Perhaps they continue farming that Q of his. Yeah, I mean, he really wants to just keep stacking that up because he really needs to get that up upwards of 300, 400 stacks before it really starts being massive damage before he really starts being that massive threat that people will talk about Nasus becoming in the late game. Mm -hmm. He is taking a bit longer to ramp up than usually on a Nasus. Like usually if you're having like a decent game on Nasus you want to be at 450 by 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. But he is he is getting there. He, he'll hit up 300 soon so we'll look to see that when that mark kind of kicks in he should be able to be grouping and fighting. Oh yeah, especially as he's getting more and more CDR items, uh, Machine K. He's going to be able to be stacking those things nonstop as as long as he keeps staying up in that top lane, which he has been doing. CS is quickly rising above to the likes of his mid laner, even though his mid laner uh, had a little better bit of a uh, laning phase than he did. Yeah, and of course, Sibir is actually just farming up very well. We haven't even really been paying attention to that. She has so much AOE wave clear, and that's the thing that even even if uh, Day Wards got ahead, the amount of wave clear on on Goons Incorporated is so massive that it would be really hard to siege down a turret, even if they got the lead. So, 
very, very good team fight. Uh, team fight and way clear composition they have right now, especially with that spirit fire, with that boomerang blade, with that to command dissonance. It's a very, very strong yeah, team comp. And I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Let's cough a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, you know, this is becoming a problem for Day Wards here. It's seeing Machinke push so far into the base, almost reaching that uh, the base itself. So you know, it's gonna they're gonna need to do something about that. It's